I would like to congratulate the organizers of this year's conference, the Philippine Community E-Center Network, and the National Computer Center for successfully holding the 8th Knowledge Exchange Conference on Community E-Centers. It is an honor to be invited and have the opportunity to speak before you this afternoon, particularly on the subject cybercrime law, which has been a controversial legislation and the subject of news for many weeks now. The government faced a nationwide online protest due to the passage of Republic Act 10175, also known as the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. This outcry was due to the questionable provisions of the said law, which allegedly curtailed the freedom of speech of the people. But what really is the content of this law? What does it intend to promote and address? ICT is undeniably relevant in our daily lives, individually and as a nation. It has become an effective tool for the exchange and delivery of information relevant to the country's development socially and economically. However, with the nature of this technology and the rapid development in information and communications technology, new forms of criminals and criminal activities arise, which are not covered by the existing laws. Thus, the proposal to provide for a comprehensive policy framework that would set regulation on cybercrime was put forward. Admittedly, I was the principal author of this bill, of this law. But before you start throwing your glasses at me, let me first uh, enumerate the salient features of the law. First, the definition of cybercrime and the acts which constitute it, such as, but not limited to, illegal access, illegal interception, data interference, system interference, misuse of devices, cyber squatting, computer-related forgery, computer-related fraud, computer-related theft, cyber sex, cyber or child pornography, unsolicited commercial communications, and the controversial one, cyber libel. Definition of certain crimes enumer enumerated in this law are consistent with the international definition of the same. Secondly, the liability and penalties to be imposed on the person and organization found guilty of any of the above punishable acts. Furthermore, the law provided for stiffer penalties aside from those stated in the e-commerce law, Anti-Child anti Pornography Act of 2009 and the Revised Penal Code. Third, the, de the designation of law enforcement authorities such as the NBI and the PNP and the duties and responsibilities. Among these are the real-time collection of traffic data, the search, seizure, examination of computer data upon proper issuance of search and seizure warrant, and the restriction or blocking access to computer data found prima facie violation of the provisions of the law. Fourth salient feature is the creation of the cybercrime office within the DOJ, which shall be the central authority in all matters related to international mutual assistance and extraditions. Fifth, the creation of the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordination Center under the administrative supervision of the President which shall be the interagency body that shall coordinate policies among concerned agencies and formulate and enforce national cyber security plan. And lastly, of course, the allotment of uh, 50 million pesos for the implementation of the law. Just like any other bill in Congress, the proposal went through the normal process. From committee hearings, where the different stakeholders were consulted, then the sponsorship of the bill on the floor, then the interpolation, 
committee amendments, individual amendments, approval on second and third readings, then finally, the bicameral conference committee meeting. Despite this very long process, it was only after the passage of the law when the whole public outrage erupted. The uh, contentious provision uh, where the inclusion of the cyber libel provision, which according to some may curtail the people's freedom of speech, and it's one higher degree punishment as compared to the revised penal code, which would be a different prosecution for libel under the RPC, and could be stated as against the double jeopardy rule. Another one is the so-called takedown provision which allows the DOJ to restrict or block content which are prima facie violation of the provisions of the law. Though these uh, contentious provisions were not included in the original bill that I filed, let me stress that, huh? I do not intend to wash my hands also of any responsibility for the passage of the law. As a member of the Senate, whether by commission or omission, I am responsible for every law that passes through it. However, having heard the public clamor against it, as your representative in the Senate, I am willing to rectify, rectify these oversights through the amendment of this law. But let me be very clear, it was never the intention of the Senate to curtail the rights of the people. Having said that, I believe that ICT is an integral part of the country's development. And this conference through education and sharing of information is an effective tool in achieving this development. Be assured that I will continuously support measures towards this aim. In fact, let me report to you that I am also the principal author of the Data Privacy Act, which protects confidentiality of all types of personal information and communication that go through the information and communication systems of government and private companies. I have also authored Senate Bill Number 178, which seeks to create the Department of Information and Communications Technology. This measure has been passed on third reading in the Senate and the House of Representatives and is now pending before the Bicameral Conference Committee. So it's just one step before it becomes a law. Aside from this, I have also authored pending uh, bills pending in the Senate which likewise aim toward the development of ICT in the country. One of which is Senate Bill Number 16 which requires mandatory computer education in all public and private high schools. <laughs> Senate Bill Number 201, which seeks to establish an ICT hub in every province of the country. <laughs> Senate Bill Number 229, which governs the introduction, promotion, and development of telecommunications-related converging technologies. Senate Bill 234, which proposes to develop and adopt grade level appropriate program or model for program on internet, internet safety for pupils. And Senate Bill 356, which seeks to establish local management information system that shall refer to the totality of means employed to systematically collect, process, store, and share information in support of local government activities. It encompasses the integrated use of information systems, computer technology, telecommunications in enhancing local government administration and achieving development objectives. Just like the amendment of the cyber prevention law, I hope that most of the, these bills, if not all, would be tackled and passed into law before the end of this Congress. If not, and if I, if I would be lucky next year, I would 
refile these bills and make sure that they will pass in the next Congress. With that, I wish everyone a fruitful uh, discussion and sharing of information in this conference so we could one day be a leader in this digital age. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay kayong lahat.